one they call Easy Money. Damn, that thing sounds good. Which one is that? <laughs> well, it might be yours, man, uh, if you like it. It's, this is that Striker 955 I just got done for your friend. Crystal, well, I kind of get that voice when I, uh, I don't know, it's my voice. Actually, we're, uh, we're, you're on a video game right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm showing your sound on one channel and mine on the other. You're doing a good job over here, too, man. It sounded good. Hey, good deal there, hard drive. Well, that thing sounds uh, bodacious, man. I didn't mean Basie as buddy. I mean, like, Darth Vader getting ready to command the troops there. It's just, uh, it's crystal clear, but it's got that, that off to it, right? Right, right, right. Well, it's exactly what you see, man. You know, that the stuff you see on the videos, it's exactly it. Here's the mic. You'll see the video. I don't even have the lids on yet. Anyways, uh, that's wide open power. Everything's wide open. I'll kill the echo, no echo, echo back on. Echo volume down. I like to set them about right about there, man. And you notice I'm not yelling into the mic. I'm just whispering. And that's power all the way down, about halfway wide open ski, man, right there, all she's got. Well, that's perfect. It couldn't sound any better. Crystal clear, got the off to it. Yeah, with that, with that reverb, uh, with the reverb in there and a little bit of echo there, that's perfect, man. It, it's just awesome. Cool, yeah, you can understand everything crystal clear, the highs and the lows, right? Let me ask you this. Now, you've seen a lot of videos, you've heard a lot of stuff, you got some miles. We talked face to face and did the manly hand grip. Is this, is this my actual voice or what? That is your actual voice. And, I mean, there's no mistaking it. There's no mistaking it whatsoever. That is all you. That is all your sound and what you do. And it's just right on the money. Awesome, cool deal. That's all we're looking for, man. See, there's a lot of people out there, man. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not mocking anyone, but they uh, got high fidelity. Some of them got it down into the groove, and that's their specialty. But it's not really high fidelity. The true meaning, according to Webster and musical people, is the, the ability to reproduce or replicate the original sound. That's, you know, reproduction, or as close to as possible. That's what they call high fidelity. And uh, this is narrow. It's... Uh, it's a, it's a little bit, not wider, but it has a broader frequency response than the typical radio. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just showing the mic. It's the SRE-198 that I'm using. Everything's wide open. I figured that'd be good for a video, too, man. You can see what yours is doing. Yours isn't hacked. I can tell you that right now. Well, that's a good deal, man. That's a good deal. Uh, I can't wait to watch it to see how it uh, sounds coming in on your end. But uh, and it's just your radio. There's no amp to it. up close too so you know at a distance you'll lose all the lows and that's the way it should be because low frequency is completely 100% useless you know at a distance or in DX now if you got the big antenna you got the power you know that's all cool it is if that's what you want to do but for a mobile radio there's some tricks to the tree come on back Ain't no doubt about that, big brother. Ain't no doubt about that. And you're right, the highs is what pierces through uh, the, all the static and all the noise out there in the distance. And there's no doubt about that. But you want to have that good, uh, I call it a growl, but that good, uh, that good bassy sound, you know, when you're up close because you don't want to sound weak there, and you don't. So you got the highs to pierce through the distance. And you got the low growl there to, to, to sound bold uh, when you're up close to people. So, sitting in that old truck stop, somebody would love to sound like that. Roger, roger. Yeah, it's bold on the bottom, but it's, it doesn't go overboard. It's those last few cycles that are tricky. <laughs> it can be that way, man. So, all right, let me get to work on the other one. Uh, it's been a while since I had it on the bench. I'm looking at it. But I gotta figure out where I was. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like done, and I just gotta make up all the rest of the stuff, plug it all in, and we'll talk to you on it. Probably won't sound exactly the same, but.
but it won't be a, a splatter box, you know what I mean? Now, uh, I really like the ears on this one. I was just showing the receive on this one, you being what? What, is your antenna 150 feet from mine? Yeah, yeah that's, that's about right. right. Uh, yeah, yeah, about 150 feet. Uh, maybe not even 150, probably 125, but uh, yeah, to be that close, that's awesome. Roger, yeah, I just showed the estimator because I've seen a lot of people have issues trying to adjust the receiver on these radios. Uh, they're usually better off to leave them alone, but yeah, it's your guys. You're, you're, if he's got the right coax antenna stud bracket, you got to make sure you got to smack him upside the head. And make sure you use the power cord that's in the box that comes with it. A lot of guys are lazy to get behind the wheel of a truck, and that's what happens. Oh, it plugs in, so it'll work. Nope, nope. Nope, nope, you gotta use the power cord that comes with it. If you gotta go longer, then you cut it like one foot after the fuse and you install AUG. Not SAE, but AUG. You know, 10 gauge wire to solder on the ends, etc. And let it rock from that area. Because these things draw a lot of current for the amount of power they put out due to the fact that it's a MOSFET radio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, the, and, and the max mod helps that out too, right? Well, it helps in the current. It's not going to help with the output of the radio and the current that is drawn through the power cord. No, if anything, it's going to draw a little bit more. It won't be surging as much, but yeah, this this has got the max mod in it. You'll see it. I'm gonna. It's gonna. I'm gonna show it. It's it's showing more than I really like to show. Really, to be honest with you, because there people are going to see the meter whacking up there. But uh, you don't have a side bander in there, do you? No, I don't. Oh, that's cool. It'll talk the same, right? Dead nuts on frequency on the sideband, same spectral purity, etc. I like these radios. I do. Yeah, I do too. I, and the only word that I can describe them as is they're real smooth. The, the receive is smooth. The audio is smooth. Uh, good sounding radios. He'll be really happy. I'll make sure that he uh, gets the correct wiring in there for his radio. You can't. You can't get. Uh, how would you say? You can't go. Uh, Right, and the phone calls and conversations I have with a lot of guys, you know I, I make people jump through the hoops, but uh, I got to do it, you know, there's no way around it. You know, most of the guys got their own analyzer now, or they're buying one ohm meter, and you know, I tell them, you know, uh, if you don't have one, buy a new one. And then read the book, don't tell me you ain't got time, you know, you drive a truck for a living, I used to, I know what it's all about. Instead of sitting there watching that goofy stuff on YouTube, read the damn book, you know, and they're doing it. You know, that way, you know, I don't have to explain to people what resistance is and what the continuity buzzer sets off at, polarities, etc. When we make the phone calls, you send me the pictures of Facebook, it's, it's in and out. I can get it done quick. I was an instructor. You know, it, you know, if you don't, if we're running together, if you can't figure out how to do your own lug book, I'm not running with you. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right, man. If you bought the ohm meter, you ought, to, you ought to take the time. Take the time. Read up. Find out what ohms is. You know, resistance and all and all what you're talking about. If you're if you're into what you're into, if you're interested in everything, then you you should take the time. I mean, it's, you do have time. You just don't want to read it. That's what it comes down to. Right, right, right. A lot of guys are doing it now, man. A lot of them are doing it. You know, it's like doing an MVI, motor vehicle inspection. I don't know what you guys call it now. It's been a while since I've been out there trailer trucking. But, you know, you got to do your own motor vehicle inspection. You know, your wheels start falling off. It's your fault, you know. Oh, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You got to keep up with your truck. You take a look at it each day. Sometime, or, you know, go over it. All you, it doesn't take long to walk around. And, and most of the things that you're looking for, you can spot pretty quickly. So, yeah, that's right. Take your time to do it. I mean, that's, a, that's what it's all about. If you want that truck to go up the road, you better be keeping tabs on it. That's just like your antenna system, your coax bracket stud, radio, power source, grounds. It's just like doing the walk around. A friend of mine, Scott Johnson, you may have heard or seen the video. And he's on the radio a lot. He was talking to another friend, uh, Stogie 300, I believe it was. He goes, did you check your antenna? He goes, well, not, not today. Well, you got to do it just like your motor vehicle inspection. <laughs> and 
And when I was out there, that radio was number one, man. Just as important as the entire truck. You know, because that's what we used back then. Safety first. Using the radio. So if you all of a sudden say, hey, my radio started smoking. Was your antenna flopping in the, in the wind or what? You know, did you keep the coax in the door? But once you know how to use an analyzer, now, the ohm meter is simple. Buy new, they come with a book. There's no reason for it to blow up on you. Once you know how to install it and how it was installed, that means you have the ability to maintain it. I would rather teach a mofo to fish than to have to feed them all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly right. Because uh, coax uh, connectors loosen up. Uh, the mounts stuff get rusted. They get varnished. And, uh, you know, stuff, you know, like you've talked about before, in the big rig, everything rattles, shakes and rolls, so stuff doesn't stay intact, so you have to, you have to check it constantly, especially if you're running all that extra power, you got to keep tabs on it, because as soon as you don't, poof. Yep, 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 I, I forget, man, tell me, uh, what's the PSI coming out of the wands in a truck wash? something man I was thinking maybe a K I, I don't know I know it'll take your skin off the regular non-commercial ones no but uh, those the commercial ones you know with the heat you know and the pressure take your skin off I've been around those you gotta be careful well you come out of the truck wash and the guy's lazy or whatever because he, want, he wants his truck clean and he doesn't want you bitching so they sit there and they you know the, the coax is facing 100 mile an hour winds you know again and bugs, you know, 70 mile an hour, 65 mile an hour, 20, 30 mile an hour headwind, you know, and rain, plus all the bugs. So you go through the truck wash, you know, and they're getting your truck clean because you say you want a spotless. And they're right up against that shit, man, you know, right with that wand, blasting it. <laughs> you know, blasting it. That water's going to get in there. So you either don't let them do it or you seal it up or you take it apart and clean it before you key the microphone, all right? That's exactly right. And that's why I like to go ahead and seal it. You know, get your dial at your grease in there, a little bit of dial at your grease. Uh, get something to cover up the creases where everything connects together. And if you take your time and go ahead and do that preventative maintenance and seal it, which I love doing that. Love doing that because it, it'll guarantee you a longer life. Uh, you still need to go back and check it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you, especially in the wintertime when you have all the salt. Uh, and then uh, and all the rain and the snow and ice uh, really helps you then. Yeah, that's salt and calcium chloride, chloride, man. It just eats through everything. I've seen it get between the safety glass panes. You know, I had a Jeep Cherokee that did that. And it started crawling up through the windshield, too. I was up around northeast Ohio. And uh, that stopped us on the road a lot. Anyways, all right, man, this is going to be a long video. Whether we know it or not, it's actually a video. Yeah, hey, I appreciate you stepping in there and, and explaining some of your knowledge there, uh, Easy Money 3D8. I gotta put the lids on this thing and get back to work on your other stuff. We'll give you a shout here shortly, alright? Well, it's gonna be a little while. I gotta make a couple coaxes and uh, do the rest of it. Alright, man? Be cool. We'll be shouting at you. 10 4, Mr. 163, Mr. Hard Drive. No problem at all, man, and uh, totally enjoyed it. I always wanted to be a superstar anyway, so I'm glad I finally got in a video. <laughs>